Um, thanks so much for coming to see me. I know you're, I know you'd rather be in class. Or no, 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 we good. Yeah, I wish I had things like this when I was growing up. I'm originally from Ecuador. I was born in Ecuador. I moved to this country when I was six. Um, I grew up in Queens, in Hollis, Queens. Is anybody from Queens here? Yes, Queens, what up? <laughs> and I knew that I wanted to be a writer from a very early age. I, I was 13 years old when uh, my teacher gave us an assignment, my, my English teacher, um, to, for extra credit. Ooh, there's a ghost in there somewhere, don't worry. Um, she gave us an assignment to said, write a three-page story and you'll get extra credit. So I didn't have a computer back then, and computers were these like giant boxes. They were like, you don't even have TVs that look like that anymore. But uh, we didn't have one, so I had to go to the library. And in the library, uh, I started working on the story, and I was the last person there. They had to kick me out because my story ended up being 21 pages long. Damn. And I only got a check plus, which I feel like I was robbed. But I knew at that moment that this is the day, like this was the moment that I decided I have a story to tell and I have a voice and I want to use that voice. Unfortunately, the story that I had written was basically about my friend's dramas. So, it, you know, I, I outed one of my friends who like liked her best friend's boyfriend and, and I changed all of their names, but I wasn't very clever about it. So like James became Johnny and Christine became Christina. And like, it was just not very clever, right? So I knew I had a little bit of work to do. Even though I got in trouble with my friends, I kept writing. Um, after that, I started writing fiction uh, and fantasy. And so when you're writing fantasy, you can just make stuff up. That's why I wrote The Vicious Deep and Labyrinth Lost, which how many of you guys have finished it? Wonderful. So um, I, when I'm creating fantasy and fiction, I get to make up my own rules and I get to make up my own worlds because like growing up in Queens, there's nothing there. There's like the park and then there's like Wendy's and 10,000 McDonald's and there's really nothing to do. So for me, I'm like, what is magical? What is fantastical? How do I take my culture, like um, you know, the superstitions that I grew up with when I was a kid, um, and how do I make that into a book and, and, and create a new world? Um, and so I started, if, how, is anybody interested in becoming a writer? Great. So I very much encourage you to keep a journal because I have entire boxes full of journals with my stories. And every single time that I feel stuck or that I feel like I don't really know where I'm going in my book, I go through them and I sort of remember what it was like to, 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 have, a, to have a story to tell. Um, and sort of going back to your roots is always important. Um, but after I decided I was going to be a writer when I was uh, 13, I started, uh, I started looking for ways to improve myself. So I went to a workshop. Um, I looked for other teen writers who were serious because back then I was really pretentious and I'm like, I want to write you know, like the next great American novel. Um, but then I discovered that I really love writing genre and I really love writing fantasy. And um, I went to college for writing, but you don't have to go to college for writing. You can go to college for anything else. You know, my mom, because we're immigrants, the, you know, my mom's greatest fear was that I wanted to be an artist or a writer. And it came true, but now she's very supportive because I dedicated a book for her. And so she, yeah, so she got over it. Um, because she always encouraged me to become a lawyer because she says, oh, you really like arguing with me, so you should be a lawyer. <laughs> And, or, you know, you love taking care of people, so you should be a doctor. And I'm like, you really don't want me cutting people up and trying to sew them up together. So <laughs> I'll stick to writing fantasy about doctors and, or, you know, making stuff up. Um, and so that's a little bit about that. I would like to tell you about Labyrinth Lost. And my inspiration for Labyrinth Lost is um, I wanted to write a story. I wanted to write a Latina version of Charmed, right? So I wanted to write about brujas because I'd always been fascinated with, witch, with witches and magic and things like that when I was a kid, but I never saw anyone who looked like me in the pages of the books, right? They were all European magic or they came from uh, the Celt like Celtic stuff or you know, Irish legends. Um, and so like, what about legends from South America? What about legends from the Caribbean? What about legends from Mexico? And so I wanted to put all of those things together and create something brand new that could be seen as new. Um, and Lula, my main character, Alex, was not based on anyone specific. I just wanted to have somebody who had a girl, who had a lot of power, 
and didn't know what to do with that power. And a lot of the times when you're afraid to be strong, it's easier to just forget about it. And so Alex tries to forget about her strength and to get rid of it. Um, and then it's catastrophic because like for somebody from that culture, like Latin American cultures, a lot of your power comes from your family. You know, like how many, and so what she ends up doing is sending her family to another dimension. And like when I was a kid, I would have wanted to send my family to another dimension all the time. Like, you know, get rid of them. They're, they're mean to you or, they, you know, they send you to your room or they make you eat like soup with weird things in it. Um, or like my mom, she used to make this soup with like chicken feet. And I'd be like, oh, come on. And she wouldn't let me leave the table until I finished eating them. So like now in the book, there's like a chicken feet scene. And I always tell my mom it's dedicated to her. Um, but she doesn't really like me calling her a bruja, so it is what it is. Um, <laughs> what happened? Wait, I can't hear you. What does that mean? What? Bruja? Oh, bruja means witch. <laughs> it's okay. Um, I, ex I explained it in the book. Um, but bruja, does, bruja means witch. Bruja means witch in Spanish. And the reason why I call them brujas instead of witches is because their magic comes from South America and it comes from uh, the Spanish language. So the, the, the magical language in the book is, is Spanish. Um, so does anybody have questions? I just wanna, I wanna make sure I get to all of your questions. Yeah, back there. Um, is there a second book? There is a second book. Uh, I'm working in it right now. It's completely different from the first book in that it is about this, the oldest sister, Lula. Her power is to heal and she, there's a big car accident with like the entire soccer team and when she's trying to heal her, her boyfriend, she accidentally heals everybody who's dying so she creates like the zombie army in Brooklyn and so now she has to fix it otherwise she dies. Uh, but she doesn't know how to fix it so it's, it's a zombie invasion in Brooklyn in the summertime. And that book, thank you, and so that book comes out April 2018, yeah, we're in the right year. 2018. Yeah. Okay, I'll get back to you. Yeah. Oh, all the time. We, this book specifically? Actually, you know what? So every single book, I have a fear of like, nobody's going to like it, or it's not going to sell, or, you know, or my publisher won't like it. And I don't think that ever really goes away. I think that self-doubt is just a natural human emotion. But I think that having a really healthy support system and having friends to talk to, like I have other writer friends or my family members. Um, I'm very close with my, my cousins and my brother. And you know, I just talked, my brother's a musician uh, and he, he's 25 and he plays guitar. And so he has the same doubts of like, nobody's gonna like my song, nobody's gonna like my music. So we share that a lot. And I think that that's the one way to get rid of that fear because that's, that's always gonna be there a little bit. Um, but the only thing I can do really is to keep writing. So, anyone else? How many books have you published? I've published seven books. Uh, and I, uh, I'm gonna have number eight next year. And I'm, gonna, I'm writing a middle grade which is a, it's gonna be like a fairy tale book. Um, is that me? No. Uh, and so I'll, by 2020, I'll have 12 books. So I'm really excited. I have them all lined up. <laughs> Do you have a, did you have a question? Somebody had their hand raised. Okay. I can't hear you. How do I write them? So I used to I used to have another I used to have two jobs. So when I when I wrote my first book, I was going to school full time, I was working full time, and I was trying to finish this novel. Now I only write full time, so I could either watch ten episodes of Supernatural, or I can yes, um, or I can or I can work on my book, right? So when you work for yourself and when you work from home you have to have your own schedule and you have to treat writing not as like, um, it is a creative endeavor and it is, uh, you know, like it is art, but it's also your job. So you have to treat it as a professional. So I wake up, I make coffee, I sit down and I have a schedule. So I'll write for two hours and then I'll take a break um, and then I'll write again and then I'll take another little break and like either take a walk or watch TV. Um, because it's not a regular nine to five. You know, I'm making my own schedules. I can write 
at midnight if I want. Or I can, you know, I can write any time of the day. But I, as long as I treat it like a job, because it is. <laughs> and also, if I don't write, I'm not getting paid. So I need to write. <laughs> How do I maintain that schedule? It's very hard because sometimes you're just not feeling it, and like, how do you write? You know, um, I if I can't write for that day, then I take a break. And if I really can't write, I will ask my editor for an extension. Um, but I, I don't know. I think it's just a lot of like taking care of myself and and like not like you need a lot of mental health in order to 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 keep such a busy schedule. So like doing things that make me happy um, and not taking on too much work because like once you get like super stressed out about the project, then it kind of goes downhill a little bit. Um, and, if, and taking breaks is a really good thing. Um, so I'm not writing seven days a week, you know, um, because I, you, I think that when you're doing that, you're just going to burn out. Um, and so I just separate and take my time. Who pays me? My publisher. Um, so it's you get you get book like when people buy your book, you get a royalty, and then every like every four months you get like the checks from that. But I also write I freelance write, which means like do you know the website bustle.com? So I write for bustle.com and I write for barnesandnoble.com and I write for other little publications and and so when you there are a lot of different ways. Uh, to make money as a writer. So there's not just one way. Um, and freelancing is, is a really good one for that. Yes, so the glasses. Um, for the um, for Lazar Fox, the character I was really interested in was Nova. Yeah. Was he like, what was your like, um, what was your inspiration? My inspiration for Nova? So Nova is this like, He's Dominican and Puerto Rican. He's super tattooed, and he is a brujo. And he's he's really fly, and he's just trying to survive. So he does a lot of bad things, like he you know he tricks people into giving up their magic. Um, and my inspiration for him was to have somebody, not a villain, because like villains who don't have backstories are kind of boring. Like you know you you want to give somebody, you want to give somebody a reason for being bad. You know, sometimes there are choices that you have to make that, you, you know, for him, his choice that he has to make for doing bad things is he wants to live. He wants to survive. Um, and in order to survive, he has to do things that he's not exactly proud of. But when he meets Alex, he wants to be a better person. So uh, my inspiration for him was giving somebody a little bit of light when there's a lot of darkness in their world. Um, and uh, he's going to be back in book two. So... To come up with my material? Yeah. Um, Labyrinth Lost, from beginning to end, took me two years because uh, we had to rewrite the middle. Because my, my, my publisher and I had different ideas of, how to, of where to take the book. And so once you get published, your book is kind of a conversation between you and your editor. Um, and so it took longer than usual. So The Vicious Deep, I wrote that book in three months. But Labyrinth Lost took me a year and then another year for editing. So it was, every book is a little bit different. Um, one of my romance novels I wrote in like three weeks because I was like, yes, you know, just like, I just had a lot of inspiration for that. Um, so everything kind of works on its own time and there is no one way to write a book either. Uh-huh. You just don't like the feel. Yeah. <laughs> what do you do when that happens? Um, I usually leave it depending on what draft it is. So the first draft is like what writers call it. I'm sorry for your teachers, but we call it the shitty first draft. <laughs> um, and that's just what we call it among writers. Like it's the first draft. It doesn't have to be good, but it just has to get on the page because you spend more time rewriting than actually than 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 anything else. So once you have the words, then you can cut out what you don't like, and you can cut out what doesn't make sense. 
or you can cut out what's boring. Um, and so it's kind of like when you, do you rewrite essays in school? Like yes. does your, <laughs> So like if your teachers give you lot, like edits and they tell you like this paragraph doesn't make sense or you need to add supporting material from the text to make it better and to make it clearer. Um, and so that's basically what we're doing with books. You just, you write something that probably sucks and then you make it better with your critique partners or with your editor um, or by yourself. Yeah, so I did that. So yesterday was my fifth year anniversary of being published. So my first novel came out May 1st, 2012. Um, and so I was writing this blog post. I was super dramatic. I'm like, oh, like it's been, it's been five years. Uh, I'm 29 <laughs> now, so I feel like the person who wrote my first book, I was 21 when I wrote it. And so I was a different person then, and I was a different kind of writer. And so like every book, you get better. You get a little bit better. And you get better through reading other writers and through having more experiences in your life. Um, and I haven't reread it, but I think that if I reread it, there would be so many things I would want to change because I've learned so much since then. You know, I've learned like in the in nine years, I've learned so much about writing and creating and how stories work that I would probably want to say like I want to rewrite the whole thing and, and make it better. But it's just because you're never done changing. When you're critiquing your own writing? Um, I think that I'm terrible at critiquing myself. So I always send it to somebody. But because you can't be objective, right? Like you can't be objective when it comes to things that you love if you love your own work or if you're, if you're really hard on yourself. So if you're hard on yourself, it's even worse because you're only going to see negative things. Um, so my advice would be to find a friend who is also as serious as you are um, and then look at your stories together. Another thing is um, if you're writing a novel, there is an outline called the Blake Snyder Beat Sheet, and it's a movie outline. And if you take the outline and you put in parts of your story on there, that's a way to, to look at, uh, to criticize yourself to see if you've done it correct, not correctly, because there is not like, a correct way to write a book, but if, you've, if you have all of the elements that are needed for a book. Um, and if you want that, you can come up to me later and I'll, I'll write it down for you. I have not gotten anything published in Spanish, so I can't really, I, I can write in Spanish, but it's not gonna be grammatically correct or spelled anything correctly. Um, I can speak Spanish, um, but my mom always makes fun of my accent. Um, and <laughs> uh, would, one day I would love to have my books translated into Spanish, but so far uh, we haven't had anybody uh, translate it. But we did have somebody option the book to become a movie, so hopefully in the next, co the next like, two years there will be a Labyrinth Lost movie. Yeah, yeah. Finding your writing style, I would say to read more. Because when you read, so I have some books that I feel like are terrible books that my friends really love and then I, you know, vice versa. So like what is good is objective to your own personal style. Um, and through reading other people's works, you're gonna figure out what your voice is and how you would write something different and how you would reimagine something. So like every fairy tale retelling, you're putting, like people are putting their own voices in um, or, or if like you see, you see a book on the shelf or you see something that is not on the shelf, like the book that you've always wanted to read but you don't, you, you know it doesn't exist, that's your voice, like <coughs> you should follow that book that doesn't exist that you've desperately wanted your whole life. And that's kind of why I wrote Labyrinth Lost because I didn't see Latina witches. So I'm like, I'll just do it myself, you know? <laughs> yeah. What do you do when you don't like know where to write things? When you don't have anything I go back to the outline. I go back, because uh, my first book I didn't have to outline. And that was a big mistake because I, I, I changed, uh, there was something I did in book one that affected book three. And I couldn't change it because I've established a rule, right? 
And so that was my bad because I did an outline. So ever after book one, after book three, I kind of realized I have to outline every single book. So if something's wrong, something's not working, usually when you're stuck, it's because you don't know how to move your character forward. So you can't ask, you forget the motivation. And the, re the way you find out your character's motivation is by asking what do they want and how are they gonna get it. And if you can't answer those questions, then you have to go back to figure out where the beginning is. So like an outline is your foundation and without a foundation, your building is gonna crumble. So learning how to outline um, is really important for me. Spoilers. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was confused on where that came from. That didn't seem to make sense. There, I feel like there are, I think that if you go back to the very beginning in the way that Alex describes Rishi, I think that the signs are there. Um, and, you know, like Nova, Nova was never meant to be romantically involved, but... <laughs> um, and and some, people, some people see it right away and other people don't. I think that Nova needs a different kind of person, and you know, I, I think that he'll find his, you know, somebody who makes him happy. Hopefully, in a book that he'll have by himself, but hasn't gotten approved yet. So, <laughs> you can write some fan fiction if you want. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyone else? Yeah. Was Nova forgiven? You have to read book two. Because uh, did you read the ending? Yeah. So he's 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 trying to do stuff to get forgiven, but I don't want to tell you about book two. <laughs> Who else? You, yeah. Yeah, so with, with, uh, with, when it came to Alex, um, I had like a very, I struggled with my relationship with my mother for a long time because I felt like I, was, I never did anything right, you know, to like make her happy. Um, but that was because I was putting a lot of pressure on myself to be like the perfect student and, and you know, uh, like the perfect daughter, the perfect um, immigrant or whatever. Um, and a lot of what Alex feels in straddling two cultures, the culture that she straddles is her witch culture and her, her you know, Brooklynese culture, whatever you want to call it. Um, and because she wants to be a regular girl, but she can't because she's a bruja, she's magic. You can't be, you can't be normal when you're magical. Um, and so I always wanted to be magical, so I put that in my stories. Because Queens is boring. <laughs> I'm, uh, so in book three, book three is going to take place in Queens. Yeah. So I, I'm going to bring it back home. Bring it to the Bronx? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you should, write, you should write a Bronx witch story. That would be cool. <laughs> Somebody do it. Yeah. Two part question. Yeah, yeah, and so plot holes I usually fix by going back to the rules you create. So with magic, you have to create rules for that magic because otherwise if you have like an all-powerful person, why don't they just get what they want from the very beginning? Why do they have to go through all these trials? Um, and so making things harder, basically you wanna be the worst person in the entire world, right? You wanna make your character suffer. Um, and so I always fix my plot holes by giving them more challenges, by making things harder. Like they get to one ending, um, they get to one place, and then everything goes wrong. Um, and, and that's usually how I fix it. And going back to outlining. And what was the second part of your question? Yeah, you oh, okay, there you go, yeah. How do you like, know when to stop? How do I know when to stop? Like when to stop writing the book and like wait so I can continue the next. Through the outline. I always know my beginning and my very ending. So like the first scene, 
was always the first scene. Like I've never changed the first scene from a book, and I've never changed the ending of a book um, because I always know. But that's just how my mind works. Um, when your character, but for, if you don't know, when your character has achieved uh, change through the story, so your character has to be a different person than they were um, from the beginning than uh, at the end than they were in the beginning. Because if they haven't changed and if they haven't learned and if they haven't achieved their goal, then what have they been doing for 320 pages, <laughs> right? Um, Sort of every character in literature that you're going to read, pay attention to how they're different from the very first scene and how they're different from the ending. Like in Catcher in the Rye, like how is Holden, Holden's still kind of whiny at the very end, but, <laughs> um, but he's learned things, right, throughout this entire journey because like the entire journey is what's making them a different person. And if they're not different at the end, if they haven't learned a lesson, then you need to figure out how to give it to them. Yeah, and if, if you don't want to, and if you don't want, if you want a second book, then bring up a new challenge, but always complete the one that you introduce in book one. Attention span? I don't really. So I'm really messy. I don't have a lot of attention span, and um, so like now I just forgot my train of thought. Um, I. I schedule myself because if I don't give myself a schedule, then like I said, like I will watch like ten hours of supernatural a day. Like I just will. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how to answer that. Um, I think I'm not sure. I'm not sure how to help you, man. <laughs> I'm sorry. I should go back and first. Um, I used to intern at a literary agency, and uh, traditionally what you do is you, write a, you finish your book, you write a query letter, and you send it to agents, and then the agent offers you representation. Um, and when you sign with an agent, then the agent takes it to all the publishers, so they can be like, buy this book, it's great. Um, so I, yeah, I just went through my agent. There are some publishers that don't take, that take unagented submissions, but you don't want to do that because you want somebody to look at your contract because you don't want to sell your firstborn child to your publisher. Yeah. Um, how do you come up with their um, personalities? With their personalities? I look at their motivation so, or what they need. So for Alex, Alex is very, she's very troubled, she's confused, she's, she has a lot of self-doubt. Um, and so the two people that are with her are Nova and Rishi. So Rishi is going to be the positive and the light and the goodness that Alex needs. Um, and Nova is going to be kind of like that challenge, right? He's going to be the opposite of Rishi. And he's going to be dubious and he's going to have, you know, um, he has other intentions. Um, and he's going to be kind of that darkness. So I always look at what does my character need and how do you create that need into people? And that's how I create the characters for the, the, uh, the personalities for my characters. How do I get over writer's block? I take a break. Um, I like taking a break and do whatever I like, like, you know, going to eat with my friends or going to like the movies or just not writing for a couple of days. And that's usually because like the reason why I get writer's block is because I'm burned out and I don't know where the story is going. Um, and so just leaving it alone for a little while, that helps me. Um, and if I can't go back, then I start writing something else and hope that that'll spark my inspiration again, if that makes sense. How do you go about, like, if you were like, thinking about um, story, right? Yeah. And like, how do you go, if you see like, a scene in your story, like, you don't necessarily know exactly how to go about something. Wait, wait, rephrase that? So I would draft it and write little by little. So it's kind of like, um, um, 
It's like, okay, so it's like, there's this book called Bird by Bird by Anne Lamott. And if you want to write, I think you, that's a good book for, for like write. Two, two of my favorite books about writing are On Writing by Stephen King and Bird by Bird by Anne Lamott. Those are my two, those are my two go-tos, right? And Anne Lamott, in her book, she says, writing something scene by scene or bird by bird, um, and there's like a metaphor for why it's called that. Um, but it's like driving in the pitch black darkness and having your headlights on so you can only see as far as the headlights. And so when you're drafting a scene, you're writing only what you can see at that moment. And so if you're writing little by little, then you're sort of expanding, and then you can see the full picture. So I think that might help. How do you feel about stories that enclose the editors? Um, as long as it doesn't give away everything. There are a couple of TV episodes that start at the end and then you go back and you see why everything happened. I think that's a cool method. Yeah. Yeah. But you also have to think about perspective and point of view. So how are you going to write the story and make it convincing? Have I read any other Stephen King? No. I haven't. I should. Yeah, no, I know. I know. I get I get yelled at all the time. <laughs> what do you what do you think is a good ending? Like a happy ending? So, I I I personally prefer sad endings. Um but I I think that there has to be a little bit of hope in every ending. Because if there isn't a little bit of hope, then writing is just bleak. And that, but that's just my, like, it depends on your point of view of life. Um, and so I'm always going to have a little bit of hope in my ending, even if my characters don't get everything that they want. Yeah. Um, for your new character, Eddie, how do you keep them from going to the tragic situation? You don't. You just make them have it. You just, you're just. Just make them cry, make them like break, like just break them and have them put themselves back together. <coughs> because you want to root for them, right? You want to be like, why are all these terrible things happening? I want good things to hap happen for this character. And so you want to you wanna make your reader root for your character, um, for good things to come. Yeah? Um, no, and I think that's because my stories are, are a lot more commercial. Um, and also, like, uh, my very first publisher is still my publisher now. So they get what's called a, an option. So they have the option to my next work um, in my series, my, my fantasy series. Um, and so if they want it, then they can buy it. Los Lagos? Yeah. Uh, I just made it up. I, I wanted a fantasy realm, and I'm like, what's really cool and has demons and monsters? And so I just, I wanted to create my own, my own, like my own fantasy world and how it applies to the brujas in the book and their mythology that I created. Yeah. Anybody else? Yes? So did you do any research in terms of like brujas and brujas, like the mythology and stuff like that? Like so the... I, what I did was counter research. Uh, so I read about Day of the Dead and I read about Santeria because I didn't want to use anything from that. Because like you don't know what you're putting in your book. Like I'm going to invoke some sort of evil spirit by accident, you know. Um, and whether you believe in it or not, like it's just you know, uh, there's a saying like con los santos no se juegan. Like you don't mess with you don't mess with things that you don't understand. So that's why I needed to create original original magic and original material um, because taking something that already exists just because you like it or you think it's cool is cultural appropriation. Um, and I didn't want to do that. And so um, when I created the, like, like uh, witches, witches and the, like, people who are Wiccans, they don't have a mythology. Um, and brujas, they, it's more of like a practice and spirituality. So, like, there's no actual gods. Um, and so I need to create gods, kind of like the Greek gods um, that exist in like Percy Jackson and all those things. And so I, I thought about how that would apply to uh, these witches in Brooklyn. 